love the look of macrame plant hangers, but want to challenge yourself in something more intricate, then you've come to the right place with our macrame shell plant hanger basket tutorial. It's Nicole here and welcome to Bochinat Macrame, the channel where you will find everything macrame related from DIY pattern tutorials to helpful tips and tricks videos. If you guys are interested in learning more macrame, make sure you click that subscribe button and then also give this video a big thumbs up. In this tutorial, we will be going over a stunning macrame plant hanger basket tutorial using two different shell patterns to make. This project is perfect for those of you who are looking to challenge yourselves with a more intricate pattern. But don't worry if you are a beginner, you should still be able to follow along with this tutorial as we walk you through step by step. This plant hanger design is unique in its own way as we've added some intricate knot patterns by incorporating some textured shell patterns on the side of the basket at the bottom. And our plant hanger posts are also a different shell pattern. If you are a beginner with macrame, meaning this is the very first project you're thinking of making, I do recommend going over the three basic knots of macrame first. So those are the square knot, the double half inch knot, and the large head knot or by practicing an easier pattern before trying to attempt this one. If you do need some helpful guides on how to get started with macrame, we do have some over on oceanout.com with a downloadable 50 knots and set it's ebook. As well, we offer a two for one cord deal on some great premium cord. If you guys are interested, check out oceanout.com for further details. And with all of that said, if you're ready, let's get right into it. For this pattern, you will need some 3mm macrame cord and a 2 inch ring. And below are the suggested cord lengths that we will be using for the pattern using 3mm cord. The ring I'll be using is a 2 inch diameter wooden ring, so that means the width of it is 2 inches. And then the cord I'll be using is a 3mm 3 ply cord from our Lush line. This is made from Egyptian Giza cotton, which is super soft, but because there are a few strands spun together as one strand, they can unravel fairly easily. All you have to do is tie a knot at the end or glue or add some tape to secure the ends and prevent them from fraying too much while working with the cord. The color that I have holding here is our fawn beige color and there are four other colors in this same size, same cord line. So if you guys are interested in checking out more details of this, you can head on over to bochinot.com. To start our pattern, we're going to take our wooden ring and four cords at 600 centimeters long each and we're going to weave all four cords through the wooden ring. Then with a 40 centimeter strand of cord, we're going to use that as a working cord for a gathering knot right below the ring. You want to make sure that the ends on both sides of the ring are even and match up together before making the gathering knot. Now taking a strand of 40 centimeter long cord, make a gathering knot right underneath the wooden ring.
To start on the plant hanger post portion of this pattern, we're going to separate out the group of cords underneath the wooden ring into two groups of four cords each. With the four cords here, we're going to make a scalloped shell pattern. Starting with the middle two cords of the four cord section, we're going to make a diagonal double halfish knot to the left. Then add one more diagonal double halfish knot to the left, and then using the middle right cord as an anchor cord, make one diagonal double halfish knot to the right. Now taking a strand of cord at 580 centimeters long, we're going to attach it onto the far left cord with a reverse lark's head plus half hitch, then repeat on the right side. On the left side, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the anchor cord over to the right for a diagonal double half inch knot over to the right. Then with the middle left cord as an anchor cord, make a row of diagonal double half inch knots to the left for a total of three double half inch knots. Now curve the anchor cord over to the right for one double half inch knot over to the right.
Now repeat the exact same pattern on the right side mirroring what we just did on the left. Repeat the same pattern underneath once more on both sides. So middle left cord for a row of double half fish knots to the left, curve one over to the right, and then the same thing on the right side. Row of double half fish knots to the right, then curve over to the left. Once done, we can take the middle two cords, so the anchor cords there, and finish off with one more diagonal double half fish knot to the left. Separate the cords in half and we're going to repeat the exact same pattern again below. So starting on the left side, we're going to make a row of double half inch knots all the way to the left. Then curve the anchor cord over to the right for one double half inch knot there. Then repeat the same thing on the right side. Finish the scalloped shell pattern below, like the first one above. Repeat for eight more scalloped shell patterns below for a total of 10 scalloped shell patterns here. Once complete with this side of the plant hanger post, you should see 10 scalloped shell patterns and then turning the pattern upside down, we're going to repeat the exact same pattern with the four cords at the back.
Once the plant hanger posts are complete on both sides, we can now start on the basket portion of the pattern at the bottom. To start the side shell pattern of the plant basket at the bottom, we're going to take six strands of cord at 400 centimeters long. We're going to group the six strands of cord together and we're going to measure one end up until about 75 centimeters. Then with all six strands of cord at the 75 centimeter mark, we're going to make an overhand knot. Tape the short end down at the top and then we're going to work on the long ends at the bottom. Here we're going to make a series of shell patterns and by the end of it we should have about 70 to 80 centimeters of fringe left on the other end. To start, we're just going to take a far right cord as an anchor cord and then a cord beside it as a working cord for a diagonal double half inch knot to the left. Then continue one cord at a time by adding on to the anchor cord for a row of diagonal double half inch knots until all the cords are attached onto the anchor cord. Once the full row is complete, we're going to take the second cord from the left as an anchor cord and we're going to make a row of double half inch knots to the right. Now we're going to take the far right anchor cord and bring it over to the left side and make a double half hitch knot row over to the left. And now we have made a row from left to right and right to left. Repeat the same pattern two more times below. Once completed, we can now take our far left cord, the anchor cord from above, and we're going to bring it downwards and over to the right for a double half hitch knot row over to the right. So starting with the left cord underneath, make a double half inch knot, then continue over to the right.
Now you can either shift the knots here by pulling on the anchor cord so that the knots meet the row up at the top, or you can complete this row of double half inch knots and then slide the knots up to the top. Eventually you will need to slide the knots up to the top row to form the shell shape. Now that we are complete with the row, we're going to pull on the anchor cord like we said and shift that row of double half inch knots up to meet the top row. And now you can see our little shell pattern has formed. To start our second shell pattern, we're going to use the same anchor cord Bring it over to the left for a diagonal row of double half inch knots to the left, just like how we started the first shell pattern up above. A point to note here is we want to keep the bottom loop so once we get to the last double half hitch knot here that's going to form the bottom loop to this shell pattern. We want that spacing to be kept at approximately 1 inches. What we want is to gradually curve this shell pattern and by leaving a little less space we're able to do that. So ensuring that there's approximately one inch of space in between each of the shell patterns that will result in a curved shell pattern at the very end. And now you can continue on with the second shell pattern like what we have done above. You can now repeat for four more shell patterns so that we have a total of six shell patterns. Now that we are complete with our six shell patterns, you can see that it curves slightly over and this is what we want because this is going to form the basket part at the bottom. So it is definitely good to have the pattern curve in like this. Repeat for one more pattern just like this with the remaining 400 centimeter long cords. Once done, you can untie the overhand knots we have made in the beginning and now we have the side shell patterns of our basket. So now that the side shell patterns are complete, we're going to bring our original pattern back and we're going to connect the two patterns together. Taking one side shell pattern, we're going to place it on top of one plant hanger post. 
we're going to take the side shell pattern in the center and place it on top and underneath the scalloped shell pattern. Separate out the middle four cords right underneath the scalloped shell pattern and we're going to attach those four cords one by one onto the center loop of the side shell pattern. So that bottom loop of the side shell pattern is where we're going to thread through these four cords and make four double half inch knots. Start by threading through the left cord bottom up and through to the left side. Then take the same cord and weave it through again, pass it through the loop to tighten the knot. Now repeat with the rest of the three cords. Once done, this is what the pattern should look like. Now we're going to take the same four cords that we had just used to make the double half inch knots and we're going to pull them through underneath to the front. Now with the four cords here, we're going to make a double half hitch knot daisy pattern. Start with the middle two cords and make two double half hitch knots diagonally to the left, then make one double half hitch knot diagonally to the right, and then close off the pattern underneath with one double half hitch knot towards the center on both sides, and then one more at the bottom. Once done this daisy pattern, there should be four cords at the back. We're going to take the right two cords at the back and then the right two cords at the front and we're going to make a square knot. To do that, we're going to take the back two cords on the right side as the working cords and then the front two cords as the anchor cords for the square knot. Then repeat the same thing on the left side. Now we can turn the pattern upside down and we're going to attach some more cords onto the loops of the shell pattern. 
we have four open loops here and we're going to attach two strands of cord onto each loop at 150 centimeters long each with reverse lark's head plus half inch knots. Take your second cord and repeat the same thing right beside it. Once this is done, repeat the two reverse Lark's head plus half hitch knots on the remaining three loops. You can now turn the pattern back around and place the cords that you had just attached towards the bottom. And now we can repeat the same pattern on the other plant hanger post. Once both sides are complete, we can now attach the two shell patterns on both sides together. On the left side here are six cords and we're going to take the middle two cords as well as the middle two cords on the right side and we're going to make a double half hitch knot daisy with these four cords here. So we have separated out the bottom two cords and then the top two cords on both sides, but we're going to take the middle two cords on both sides for a daisy pattern. Once the daisy pattern is complete, we're now going to take the left cord, so the anchor cord from the left shell pattern, and we're going to make two diagonal double half inch knots to the right. We're going to use the two cords from the left side of the daisy pattern as the working cords. Then repeat the same thing on the right side, mirroring what we just did on the left. Now with the middle two cords here, we're going to make a diagonal double half inch knot to the left. Now turn the pattern upside down and do the same thing on the other side. Now that the sides are all connected, we can form the basket part of the pattern, which is going to be a series of square knot patterns. What we're going to do is take the middle four cords from the side daisy and make a square knot there. Then there should be a total of eight cords right behind it, and we're going to separate it out into two groups 
and make a square knot on the left side and a square knot on the right side. So taking the side cords on the left, make a square knot, then repeat on the right side. Now that we're done the middle section, we're going to work on the sections in the other loops. There should be four chords per section, and what we're going to do is make a square knot underneath each of those sections. Continue with the rest and then also repeat the same thing on the other side. Once done, you should see square knots underneath every section. Now we're going to start on one side of a plant hanger post. And what we're going to do is take some time separating out the middle cords here underneath the plant hanger post, which should be eight cords, and then the next eight cords on the left, and then the next eight cords on the right. With the middle group of eight cords, we're going to start in the middle, four cords for an alternating square knot. And then after that, we're going to make another row of square knots with the outer left four chords and the outer right four chords. And then we're going to continue repeating this pattern downwards. Add 14 more rows of alternating square knots after this. Once that is done, we're going to work on the next eight group section to the right. Again, we're going to start with the middle four chords for an alternating square knot, then make another row underneath. Then underneath, add 14 more rows of square knots. Now we can repeat the exact same pattern with the left eight chords. Now repeat the same three columns on the other side. Now working on the sides of the basket pattern with a total of 12 quarts, we're going to connect the square knots that's already there with alternating square knots in between. Before we do that, we're going to add another consecutive square knot with the far left four chords and the far right four chords. So as you can see here with the far left four chords, we're going to add another square knot underneath.
then taking the two left chords from the front square knot and then the right two chords from the square knot we had just finished making we're going to make an alternating square knot at the front you don't have to tighten it all the way to the back you do want this square knot here to face the front side now repeat the same thing on the right side Now we're going to take the left four chords and make an alternating square knot. Then continue four chords at a time with square knots to the right. Underneath, add a row of alternating square knots. And then underneath, add seven more rows of alternating square knot. Now repeat the same thing on the other side. Now that all the square knot columns are complete, we can now seal the basket at the bottom with a gathering knot. We're going to use a strand of cord from the bottom fringe. You should have a few longer strands of fringe at the bottom. Take the longest strand and we're going to measure 70 centimeters from the bottom and we're gonna cut that strand off and use that as a working cord for a gathering knot. Gather the square knot columns together nicely at the bottom so that they only slightly overlap one another. Then take our strand of 70 centimeter long cord, make a gathering knot. Pull on the gathered cords below to even out the sides of the basket. This can be done easier by placing your plant pot in and then pulling up the vertical cords at the bottom to make sure that it sits nicely. Then lastly, we're going to trim the fringe at the very bottom to your desired length.
And you have now made an incredible plant hanger using two shell knot patterns. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and was inspired with the knots and techniques used in this tutorial. Patterns like these are what we go over on our Bochi Knot Macrame community on Patreon. We usually focus on more intermediate level projects just like this so that you can advance your macrame skill set sooner. If you guys are interested in learning more, you guys can check out patreon.com slash Bochi Knot for more details. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button to stay tuned for more more Mac May videos just like this. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. There are certain parts of this tutorial where we if you guys know what macrame is. Wait, I think. Welcome to Bochina Macrame.